So now we need to make a mathematical argument as to whether these two momenta overlap. This is before and after, okay? So you're writing your conclusion. What you're going to say, the first thing you're going to do, right, is say uh, the momentum before and after were very close. Pretty close, I don't know, right? Uh, before the momentum was 51.0 gram meters per second, and after it was 53.8 gram meters per second. Uh, and I think we should say plus or minus 2.0, plus or minus 2.1. Um, these clearly overlap because, now we need to make an argument here, right? Because the jury is not all that exciting. It's not all that you know intelligent, perhaps, right? Uh, the higher 53.8 could have been as low as, well, what's 53.8 minus 2.1? That is, it could have been as low as, could have been as low as 51.7. So I just took this and subtracted that, right? It could have been as low as, and the momentum before of 51.0 could have been as high as, well, two plus 51 is 53.0. So therefore, um, they could have been the same. There we go. Don't avoid saying that you proved that momentum was conserved. Um, you didn't prove that it was conserved. You just failed to disprove its non-conservation. <laughs> it's, it's convoluted, but we didn't prove it, right? Um, and here's why, right? Imagine that we got, you know, 51.00 and 51.00. And, and, and our uncertainty was, you know, a half of that smallest digit. That doesn't mean we've proven it. It just means that our experiment with its precision has failed to disprove it. It's possible that in the future we could have something that has, we could go to six places past the decimal and with these units and, and have an uncertainty that's even smaller than that. And we could show that there actually is a systematic difference between this, right? There's something going on here. Now, now you know, this is momentum. I'm pretty sure it's conserved, right? But if we're talking about something like the radius of a proton, well, that's, you know, that's less well known. Okay, so, so just, just be careful of that. And, and oftentimes we don't really disprove the old theory, we just add to it. You know, this is an example of this is like the Bohr atom, um, that he had all these specific spectral lines, but then they discovered when you put a magnetic field in there, that the lines would split. I, I believe that's called the Zeeman effect. Um, but it, it uh, and then they discovered spin up, spin down, right? So, so Bohr's atom isn't wrong, you just need to add the concept of uh, quantum spin. But anyway, sorry, that was a rant.